Well, good evening, everybody. Thanks so much for joining our welcome back night, unfortunately, virtually tonight. And I appreciate everybody's patience with uh, the last minute change. Uh, as I said in my email, campus is ready to go. We can't wait to have you on campus tomorrow for our Meet the Teacher event. Um, class lists should be public at this point, and so you should be able to see your child's uh, teacher and schedule online. Uh, if you are in the pre-K through fifth grade, uh, you'll get your child's uh, schedule tomorrow when you come for Meet the Teacher. We've got all the packets in the main office. And uh, the campus is in great condition, other than a little bit of standing water um, out in the front. It looks like we have uh, some waterfront property out in the front. And uh, it was going to make parking just a little bit tight tonight. And then our gym, uh, we are still looking to repair one of the two AC units in our gym. And so I just I, I just didn't want uh, 80 degree gym tonight. I didn't think that was a great way to start the school year. So I'm gonna go quickly through this presentation. A lot of it's refresher, uh, a couple of small tweaks to our school year procedures, uh, but otherwise all of our teachers are on campus, excited to see you tomorrow, excited to see your children and excited to start uh, the school year on uh, Monday. In this webinar format, uh, please, at any point, use the Q&A feature. Uh, only I will see the questions you type in, so you can type in any question. Uh, I won't say who asked the question, so please don't be afraid to ask a question. I won't embarrass anybody, and I'll stay online until every single question is answered. I want everyone to feel really good about tomorrow and really good about the start of the school year on Monday. And so with that, I'm going to just uh, jump on in here. Uh, as we always do, let's go ahead and uh, begin this school year and begin this presentation with a prayer in the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Remember, O most gracious Virgin Mary, that never was it known that anyone who fled to your protection, implored your help, or sought your intercession was left unaided. Inspired by this confidence, we fly into you, O Virgin of Virgins, our Mother. To you do we come, before you do we stand, sinful and sorrowful. O Mother of the Word incarnate, despise not our petitions, but in your mercy, hear and answer us. Amen. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. So our mission uh, remains the same, uh, and we have been true to this mission for a long time, and the mission is something that we believe very much in here at RPA. Our mission is that we partner with our families to provide an education of rich academics with Catholic formation. We teach the mind, educate the heart, and form the character of tomorrow's leaders. And, uh, and I also am very excited to share with you uh, publicly our vision for the future of Royal Palm Academy. And over the course of this year, I'll, I'll talk more about this vision for Royal Palm Academy. And when you come onto campus tomorrow, uh, you'll see in front of the campus by the gazebo, uh, this, this master site plan uh, on a post in front of the uh, campus. And this is the vision that we have for the future of Royal Palm Academy. Now, of course, as we have a vision for the future, our mission, our identity, uh, the, the family feel that we have on campus, uh, the centrality of our Catholic faith, uh, all of the things that you love about Royal Palm Academy will continue to be true. Uh, but as today showed and, and uh, as we continue to experience, we, we do desperately need to modernize and update uh, and make ourselves a, a permanent 21st century permanent campus. And so this master site plan has been uh, really carefully worked on over the last uh, uh, you know 26 years of the school's history to be sure. but but in uh, earnest in the last uh, year and a half, we formed a couple of committees of uh, parents and and friends of the school and stakeholders with expertise in a strategic planning process and a master site planning process. And um, uh, as I said, I'm going to talk more about this, this vision for the future of Royal Palm Academy over the course of the year, but I just wanted to start the school year with some excitement about the movement that we are, are beginning to make towards, towards this future. Normally, at this stage in the presentation, I would introduce all of the teachers and all of the staff, and I would ask everybody to stand up and wave. 
Uh, I'm going to skip those slides. I, I pulled them out of this presentation because we're virtual and, and we can't see each other. Uh, but I did send out an email just a couple of weeks ago introducing this year's team to everybody. We have a couple of new folks on campus, but overall, most uh, most of our teachers and staff returned this year. And, uh, and I'm really, really excited for you to meet uh, some of the really great new teachers that we have here on campus, and we've got a couple of new staff members as well. Uh, but I do want to take just a moment and talk about, as we start this school year, uh, the part of our mission statement where we talk about partnering with our families. This is something that's very important to us at RPA. We take that partnership seriously. We do not want to be a school where you simply drop your child off in the morning and then pick your child up in the afternoon. And uh, it's something that we believe in, and uh, we certainly want there to be uh, a respectful, trusting, loving partnership. However, as in any relationship, uh, we each bring our own fears to that relationship, and it can at times strain that relationship. And the relationship between our families and our teachers is not unlike any deep, meaningful relationship. I think any any marriage, any married couple would say, yeah, of course we love each other, but there are times when uh, that relationship is strained and it's strained by perhaps miscommunication, it's strained by uh, fear or anxiety. And there was a great book uh, that was written a few years ago, published by uh, the National Association of Independent Schools. It's called Hopes and Fears. And this book talked about the inherent tension between uh, the fears of parents and the fears of teachers. And I think it's helpful to acknowledge this tension at the start of the school year so that when those fears manifest themselves uh, over the course of the year, uh, we can at least acknowledge that those fears are normal, that those fears are perfectly uh, ordinary and to be expected, but then how do we work through that together in collaboration and partnership? And so many common parent fears are things like, will my child be safe? Will the teacher judge me as a parent? Uh, there's fear about the power it feels like that a teacher might have over the future of your child. Sometimes there's a fear that that my child will be labeled and and underlying those fears is often a fear that the dreams that I have for my child's future might not come true or, or might be jeopardized or, or maybe the teacher is not helping me achieve the future that I want for my child. Those are normal and perfectly understandable fears and teachers also bring to the table uh, some fears, uh, fears that mistakes that they might make during the school day will be distorted uh, by children and 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 told in a way that doesn't really reflect the reality of what happened in the classroom. And I think we've all experienced that where the way a child describes something is not always uh, the same as a, the way an adult might have described something. Um, also, teachers see a very different side of your child, and it is the case, especially during the school year, that a parent might see your own child two, three, four hours in the day, whereas we see your child seven, eight, nine, ten hours in the day, and we see your child as they interact with other children, we see your child as they interact with adults, and so we, we might see a, a different side of your child. And then when we try to communicate uh, a side of your child that we are seeing, um, teachers can, can have a fear, will parents be receptive to that communication? So how do we, how do we uh, remedy this, this tension between parent fears and teacher fears? For parents, uh, we would ask that parents always assume that our teachers are communicating uh, the concerns or challenges that we are experiencing with love and with respect for the future of your child. That that what we're telling you is, is intended to help your child grow to their fullness. It is also normal for all children to experience developmental changes in their behavior and their aptitude and in their attitude. Very commonly, we will bring a concern to a parent and have a parent say to us, well, 
nobody's ever said this to me before, or, well, this has never been a problem before. And that's normal. It is very normal for a child going from first grade to second grade to third grade to experience developmental changes in their behavior and their attitude and their aptitude. But at the end of the day, uh, one of the things I really like to remind folks is that this is practice. Uh, elementary and middle school uh, really doesn't count for anything meaningful. And what I mean by that is the opportunities that we want for our children as parents, those opportunities really are becoming permanent in high school. High school is really where a child's permanent record begins to take shape and where opportunities really begin to take shape is in high school. High school transcript is important. The high school experience is, is the only thing that colleges will look at. And then determining what kind of college opportunities your child has will be wholly dependent on their high school experience. I share that because now is the time for your child to experience difficulty, challenge, failure, uh, and really learn to grow in grit and tenacity and overcoming difficulty. And, and so right up front, I want to ask all parents, embrace those opportunities. When your child is really frustrated about a class or maybe doesn't really like one of their teachers or is really experiencing stress and angst with a particular class or a particular excitement, I would say embrace that. Embrace that as a growth opportunity. And even if they fail, seemingly fail in that moment, uh, what they're learning is how to overcome challenge, which will prepare them very well for high school and beyond. So that's that's kind of my sales pitch up front for embracing those opportunities during the year. And then from a teacher partnership standpoint, uh, the remedy that we pledge to brain is that we will always approach your child with love, that we will pour out our very best energy, our skill, our talent uh, to provide you with the absolute best experience possible for your child. Uh, we will bring to you uh, not, not a label or not, not an emotional language, but an objective communication about what we're experiencing, either from a aptitude standpoint as it relates to their classroom uh, or as it relates to their behavior or as it relates to the way they're interacting socially with their peers. Of course, this partnership has a lot of support, this partnership between teachers and parents. And so, uh, and I'm going to email out these these slides, and and I've, I think you all have these these email addresses. But we have a lot of uh, support staff uh, here that can help you, and and I want everyone to know that if you ever have a question, a question about your child, a question about the school, a question on any topic whatsoever, please, you are always welcome to contact me. I will either know the answer or I do know who to send your question to so that you get the best possible response as quickly as possible. So I am always an option, but we have a lot of uh, folks that uh, love your children and love our teachers and are available to help. And uh, just quickly, I wanted to go through some of those folks. So, of course, we all know Pat Bolzer. She's our front uh, office receptionist. She's been at the school for 25 years. Um, and, and Pat is typically the very first person you will encounter when you walk in our door. And she definitely knows who to point you to or, or how to answer any question that you might have. And she's also typically the first person you'll hear when you call the school. Uh, Jim Hoy is a new member of our administrative team. He's the Dean of Faculty and Students, brings a lot of experience to our team. Uh, generally, you'll go to Jim for any questions about our athletic program, our school medical program, anything that relates to uh, students or student discipline, uh, anything that relates to teachers. Um, Jim's a, a, a really knowledgeable guy. He's jumped in with both feet right out of the gate. And I think that uh, you'll be very impressed by your interactions with him uh, as soon as you have a chance to meet him. Uh, Jen Clark, uh, who I think most of you know and love, Jen 
refers to herself as the director of fun. Uh, she loves all of our students. She loves our teachers. Really, anything that's related to your child's experience here at Royal Palm Academy, outside of academics, typically, uh, Jen has a hand in, in bringing that to fruition. Tammy Mazinski is our Director of Curriculum and Instruction. Uh, Tammy is responsible for the delivery of the academic experience to your child. So anything that deals with homework or grades or curriculum or academics, anything that's within that sphere, Tammy is, is the right person to talk to. Of course, your teacher really ought to be the, the first person that you, you reach out to, but Tammy is always available to help in that regard as well. Sherry Waller is our Director of Advancement, and Sherry uh, really helps to promote Royal Palm Academy in our community. Uh, she really helps to advance the mission of Royal Palm Academy, and that there's a lot of facets to that. One of the facets is fundraising, but then there's also a, a kind of a marketing and a brand awareness of Royal Palm Academy. And then also, how do we how do we create really great partnerships uh, here locally in Naples and in Collier County so that um, Royal Palm Academy is secured for the next 25 years of our existence as well? We have a great new school nurse, uh, Nurse Sabrina. Uh, I didn't have a picture of Nurse Sabrina when I made this presentation, uh, but I know that you will be very excited to meet her. Uh, she's going to be running our clinic. Uh, she'll be running uh, anything that relates to student allergies, anything related to chronic conditions, uh, health and safety training. Um, we just had our CPR and first day training for all employees a couple of days ago. Uh, anything related to illness, uh, that'll be, uh, and also attendance, that'll be Nurse Sabrina. And then there's some other helpful folks to know. Uh, Dennis, Kathy, Michelle, Javier, Dorothy, all, all familiar names uh, that have a different role in different parts of our program. I know a couple of members of our of our board are are on this uh, webinar, and uh, and our board of directors is uh, it really the driver of the future of the strategic plan here at Royal Palm Academy. Uh, Royal Palm Academy is an independent Catholic school, and so we are essentially a nonprofit corporation. Uh, so the board is the corporate owners of the school. They have one employee, and that's me. I serve as the chief executive officer of, of this nonprofit corporation. So all of the operational employment, compensation program, curriculum, all of the operational details really fall to me. And then the board partners with me for the uh, the strategic future of the school and uh, and are, are uh, really more, more aligned to the budget, uh, and to uh, future objectives for the school. And I see we've got our first question here. Let me see what this is here. Okay, um, I'm going to get to this, but there's um, a question that refers to, will there be a resource this year? And if so, how will it differ from last year? And, I, and I, uh, I'll address that right now because I actually, I know for a fact that I did not include a slide in my presentation. So we do provide student support um, we used to call it resource. We used to call it ACE, and, and now we're referring to it as student support. We do still have student support, and uh, this question is anonymous, but if, if you uh, sense that your child needs a little extra help succeeding in our academic program, I would encourage you to contact Tammy, and uh, Tammy can have a conversation with you about the different ways that we can provide your child with some additional help. Uh, we do have uh, Aaron Brady, who will be serving as a reading interventionist this year. Aaron will be pushing into our K-2 classrooms and helping those teachers, uh, particularly with students that might be struggling in some early reading skills. Um, we also uh, have a couple of teachers who are identified that will provide either one-on-one -on -one or small group assistance uh, to students that need that assistance. As a, as a private independent school, we do not have a lot of uh, the same level of student resources that, that a public school might have. Uh, but if you have a conversation with Tammy, 
Um, I'm confident that the students that we have enrolled at Royal Palm Academy can be served by our teachers and can be served by um, our student support. Okay. Um, yeah, at any point, ask questions and I'm and I will I will answer every question uh, before I log off here. Okay. I also want to make a plug for our Royal Palm Academy parent volunteer organization. We've got a, a really terrific PVO. Whether you're a new parent or whether you're a returning parent, please consider getting involved in our PVO. It's great socially. It, it provides uh, just a wonderful support to our school, a great partnership to our school. Um, please, please consider getting involved. And the kickoff meeting for the PVO is Friday, the first week of school. So that's a week from tomorrow, August 16th. And that meeting will be at 8.20 a.m. in our gym, in the MAC. Uh, there's no obligation if you come to the meeting, even just to meet, meet people, there's no obligation if you come. Please do consider coming. <clears throat> I want to briefly talk about the role of fundraising and why we do fundraising as a, an independent Catholic school. Royal Palm Academy is a different kind of Catholic school than, than most of uh, the Catholic schools that you might be familiar with. As an independent school, we don't receive any church funding. We don't receive any Diocese of Venice funding. Uh, we don't get any money from any parishes. We don't get any money from Catholic charities. Most Catholic schools uh, typically are heavily subsidized by the Catholic Church, by the local diocese, and by these other organizations. Um, I have worked personally in both diocesan schools and independent schools. Typically, diocesan schools are subsidized uh, about 30% by the Catholic Church, whereas we as an independent school are 100% responsible for our financial obligations. And so typically, a diocesan school is able to offer uh, low tuition and generally, they try to offer competitive salaries, but the way they do that is typically diocesan schools have higher classroom sizes, right? If I'm charging a lower tuition, then I need more customers in order to be able to compete in the marketplace <clears throat> for uh, high-performing teachers. Whereas typically for independent schools, uh, there is a, a desire for the lowest possible classroom size. We still need competitive salaries for high quality teachers. And so typically independent schools have a higher tuition uh, than a diocesan school might have. And that's the case even here locally. Royal Palm Academy, our tuition is higher than uh, a St. Anne's or a St. Elizabeth Seton or a, a Donahue Academy their tuition is generally lower for two reasons. One, they have much larger classroom sizes, more students in the classroom is more customers, you can have a lower tuition. And then there's also the, the subsidizing that's happening with the Catholic Church. So Royal Palm Academy, uh, we mitigate that high tuition, uh, try to keep it as low as possible uh, by fundraising. And this is very common in independent education. Um, and so please, I, I just realized I did not update this slide. These dates are incorrect. That's my fault. Uh, but we have four major fundraisers. We've got the uh, annual fund, which is going to kick off here soon. It's actually the 11th annual Lily Pulitzer Fashion Show, and that date is incorrect. Uh, we also have a day of giving, which will be on January 29th, not the 31st this year. And then our gala is actually March 1st, uh, not April 26th. You can see that I, I started with last year's presentation and then updated it. So I'll get those dates fixed. Um, all private schools rely on fundraising. Uh, Sherry Waller is our director of advancement, is really the, the energy and the force and the driver behind our annual fundraising for those four major events. Uh, fundraising really demonstrates the school community's uh, commitment to the school. Uh, these are this, these are uh, these funds really help to provide support to our teachers, our programs, professional development, athletics, you name it. It helps keep the school as affordable as possible and as cutting edge as possible. All right. I'm in the final stretch now, I promise. And these are the uh, the school year reminders. Many things are similar or the same, but there's a few small tweaks from last year. And again, at any point, please use that Q&A feature and ask any questions. So our lunch program is the same. Uh, we'll continue offering hot lunch through Chef Dan, 
orders must be placed uh, no later than 7 a.m. that morning. And, and, and he asks that if possible, please try to place that order the night before. You can place orders several days in advance, but just make sure that you select which day. Uh, I think once or twice last year, a parent tried to enter five orders, but all five were put in for the same day and they all, they all showed up the same day. Um, please do not order DoorDash or Grubhub or any other food delivery. We, we do not have the staff available to receive that food and then deliver that food to your child. And so what will happen is that food will just sit in the front office all day. And then at 315, you're welcome to come and, and pick it up in the front office. But we will not be able to deliver any of that uh, to your child. So please either pack lunch or order lunch through Chef Dan. Our morning car line uh, will happen the same that it's happened uh, in the past several years. Cars will enter. They'll come around. Uh, the parking lot drop off right in front of the school and then exit. Please only make a right-hand turn in the morning. Please do not try to make a left-hand turn, which is both dangerous and uh, can really cause a backup to occur on our campus. For our school morning routine, uh, very similar, but, but a little bit of a tweak in our morning routine. So <clears throat> morning care will continue to happen in the morning, starting at 7 a.m. in the gym. Students can be dropped off as early as 7 a.m. Uh, we will still have an armed security officer on campus from 7 a.m. till 5.30. And so uh, if you drop your child off at 7, we've got armed security on campus and we've got people in the gym to uh, watch students and your child can just walk straight back to the gym. New this year is a little bit of a tweak. If you are a returning family, you might remember that every day, uh, we never knew were students going to the gym or were they going to the classrooms. That was one challenge that we experienced. Another challenge was that we teachers and staff were gathering for morning prayer at 745, but that meant that all of the adults were in the chapel and we didn't have anybody out in front uh, during that, that you know, peak time of, of dropping students off. That was another challenge that we experienced. And so to mitigate those challenges, uh, we're going to make a little tweak to the morning routine. Students will go to the gym from 7 to 8 a.m. every single morning. Then at 8 o'clock, all students will begin going directly to their homerooms. So if you drop your child off at 745, they'll go to the gym. And then at 8 a.m., everybody goes to the homerooms. Uh, they'll go to the homerooms. They'll... Um, uh, drop off their backpacks. They'll they'll drop you know, to have attendance taken with the homeroom teacher, and then at eight fifteen, all of the teachers will take the students to the gym, and all of us, all employees, all teachers, all staff, all students, we will all go to the gym, and we will begin the school day with prayer, the pledge, announcements, um, but. But we'll do that all together. And the way we can do that is we're going to close that gate right at 815. So uh, if you show up at 816, you're going to have to walk your child into the main office, sign them in. Uh, so please do make sure that you drop your child off on time because at 815, we're going to close that gate and we are all going to walk on down to the gym. That's how we're going to start the day. The uh, the school uh, end routine will be very, very similar as it was last year. So this first line, the car line begins queuing at approximately 2.30. That's not a hard and fast policy, but that's just what I observed happening last year is generally speaking, cars would start lining up as early as 2.30. That's just what I observed. The school day ends at 3.15, and then our car line begins right at 3.15, and last year, it typically only took about 20 minutes, 25 minutes, but as long as 30 minutes, uh, typically our car line was finished no later than 345. We do offer uh, aftercare, child watch from 330 to 530 daily. Um, as before, you don't need to sign up for that in advance. Uh, you can use it on an as-needed basis. We also have a lot of clubs and sports available this year, and those will begin at 345 once Carline is finished. Um, one small tweak for this year. 
Uh, we were experiencing last year, some parents would come into the main office at 310 and say, can you please have my child come to the main office right now? And that was really a, a challenge for us. It was very disruptive for us as we were trying to close up the school day. It was disruptive in the classrooms as students were being called out of the classrooms five minutes early or six minutes early or two minutes early. And so uh, this year, uh, if you need an early dismissal for your child, uh, we're going to ask that you please communicate that before 2.30. So you can call us, you can use Pickup Patrol, and uh, or you can email us. Let us know that you need your child at 2.30, 2.45, 3 o'clock if you have an appointment. But starting at 2.30, uh, we're not going to allow last-minute pickups to occur that way, the children can finish their eighth period class. They can finish the school day, and uh, and our staff can be focused on wrapping up the school day. And I see I've got one question here. Um, with the new morning drop-off prayer routine, do the kids need to be there by 8? The students will need to be in their classrooms by 8.15. So I would suggest uh, please drop off by 8.10. If you drop off your child by 810, that gives them a couple of minutes to walk down to their classroom and, and they'll be fine. We're not going to close the front gate until 815. So even if they show up right at 814, we'll let them through the gate. They can run down to their classroom and catch up with their classmates. Uh, but the school day is going to begin promptly at 815. All right. Moving on here. Afternoon car line will, will operate uh, exactly like it did last year. The car line will queue up. We'll uh, have the loading zone happen all the way back towards the gym. And if you want to park in the gravel lot or in the paved lot and walk onto campus and, um, and pick up your child directly, that's certainly uh, fine to do as well. <clears throat> Couple of car line reminders. Please do not exit your vehicle during drop off or pickup. We will assist your child. Uh, children must be able to buckle themselves in. If your child doesn't know how to buckle themselves in, just please pull, pull into a parking spot with your child and then exit your vehicle and buckle them up. Please don't do that while you're in car line uh, because that creates a little bit of a safety hazard for us and it also can really hold up the car line. All right, I see I've got a question here. I have a pre-K-4 child who ends at noon. Do I pick her up from the classroom at noon? How does early pickup work? Thank you for that question. If you have a pre-K child that's doing the half-day pickup at noon, uh, we will bring the half-day students to the front gate. So you'll see a, a cluster of parents gathering right in front of the front gate. We'll bring the children out to the front gate. There's no car line because it's typically only about five or six or seven people that are picking up. So just park, walk on up to the front gate. Uh, you'll see a couple of other parents there at noon who are also picking up for the half day program. And then uh, the teacher or a teacher assistant will walk the pre-K children out at noon. Good question. Thank you. All right. Okay, um, so a word of caution. This happens every single year. So the first week of school, we don't have any clubs and we don't have any sports. That's when afternoon car line is the heaviest, is in the first week of school. And what will happen is our car line will back up onto Livingston Road. And I just want everybody to be aware of that. We know that that's going to happen. We're aware of it. It only lasts the first five days. Then when clubs and sports and activities begin, uh, the car line gets cut in half because a lot of students will do club sports and activities. I'll share with you that I have been in communication with the Call Your Carry Sheriff's Office and uh, the sheriffs will have deputies visible on Livingston next week during our afternoon pickup they're aware of it they're going to make sure that they do some extra patrols keep traffic moving at a reasonable pace and um, and i just wanted you to be aware that that there will be an extra long line for the afternoon pickup next week uh, because clubs and sports haven't started yet Student food and drink students may only bring water to the classrooms so in the morning 
Um, if you like to pick up, you know, a Starbucks or a, a Dunkin' Donuts drink with your child, please have them drink that in the car before they go to the classrooms. Um, sometimes the kids get a little rowdy with each other. And then one of those uh, sugary drinks gets uh, spilled in the classroom and it creates a real sticky mess for the teacher and, and it can be uh, a challenge for us. So, so please only water in the classrooms. I've already talked about new, no food deliveries. If you pack lunch for your child, please pack an ice pack, particularly if there's any chilled items. And just as a reminder, uh, we don't have any microwaves available for students to use during lunch. <clears throat> Okay, so I've got a question about, will there be an early dismissal on Thursdays at 2.15? Yes. Um, and, I, and I don't know if I have a slide on this, so thank you for that question. So uh, our early dismissal day will be on Thursday, and pickup will happen at 2.15 as opposed to 3.15. We do still have aftercare available, so the aftercare would be available from 2.30 to 5.30. And uh, we move that to Thursday because with mass on Wednesday, having mass and early dismissal on the same day created really, really short classes. And so we separated those two, mass on Wednesday, early dismissal on Thursday, to maximize the instructional minutes of the class periods and to make them more uniform across the week. Uh, so thank you for that question. Yes, early dismissal on Thursdays. Are young kids allowed to bring milk with their lunch? You know, I think it depends on the kind of milk. I know that I think Horizon makes those little milk boxes that don't need to be refrigerated. And so if it's a non-refrigerated milk drink, that I think would be fine. Um, I would be cautious with uh, leaving a, a milk box in their lunch if unless you pack like a really good ice pack in there. Uh, but yeah, we don't have a, a rule against that. Do we get a car tag sticker? Yes, those are in your packets that are in the main office. You'll receive your packet tomorrow when you come for Meet the Teacher. We were going to distribute those tonight, and obviously we are all virtual. To confirm with lunch, kids cannot bring apple juice. Um, no, I guess I didn't. I didn't mean that. And so thank you for that question. Um, yes, if you pack a, a fruit juice for your child for lunch, that's not really what I was referring to. Um, what was happening is, and this is maybe mostly with the middle school students or like the fifth and fourth grade. We had a lot of students last year that were showing up with, um, you know, drinks from like a fast food, you know, like a Dunkin Donuts or a Starbucks. And then what happens is, is the kids are drinking their drinks, they're running around, you know, goofing around, and those drinks are inevitably spilling. During lunch, that doesn't really happen. The students are seated. Um, they're either, if they're young, they're in the classroom. If they're outside, they're seated. Um, so that's fine. If you want to pack a, a, a juice box or something for lunch, that's fine. About drinks, you mentioned Starbucks, like drinks not allowed. How about a fruit juice box? I just answered that. Thank you. Oh, will there be a zero period this year? No, there's not going to be a zero period this year. Um, instead, we do have different schedules for different days. And I'll talk a little bit about schedules and, and where they can be found on our website. But there's not, last year we tried something that we called zero period. Uh, didn't work great for us. And so, no, there's no zero period this year. <laughs> Do clubs still start at the same time on the early dismissal day? No, the clubs always begin at 345. The early dismissal day on Thursdays is so we can have a faculty and staff meeting. And it's our faculty and staff who moderate clubs. And so uh, Carline on Thursdays will go from 215 to 245. And then, um, and then uh, our staff meeting goes from... 2.45 to 3.30, and then the clubs can begin after that. So clubs always begin at 3.45, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday, and Friday. Is early dismissal every Thursday except for holidays? Yes, there will be an early dismissal every Thursday, and we will have this on our calendar, and I've got, in a few slides, I've got a slide that will show that. <clears throat> 
in the meeting yesterday, I thought mass was on Thursdays this year. So, so this parent is referring to, I did the new family Q and a yesterday next week. A holy day of obligation is on Thursday. August 15th is a holy day of obligation. So next week we have mass on Thursday. That's that's not typical, but that's because it's a holy day of obligation. So generally speaking through the year, mass will typically be on Wednesday unless there's a special reason to have mass on a different day than Wednesday. So uh, that's what I was referring to yesterday. <clears throat> For pre-K-3, do the kids that are full-time take a nap? Yes, uh, pre-K does get a nap, and that nap typically occurs right after they lunch. Typically around 12.45, uh, they'll take a nap. Does my pre-K-4 who leaves at noon still get to bring a snack and a water bottle? I believe the answer is yes, but I, I would encourage you just to check with the teacher tomorrow. When you come tomorrow, uh, the pre-K teacher will give you their class schedule. Uh, for the half-day pre-K students, we do all of the specials in the morning. So your child's not going to miss out on music or PE or technology or library or any of the specials. We do that for pre-K so that the half-day students get the specials the same as the full-day students. I'm pretty sure that pre-K does a snack in the morning before noon, but Pre-K who are half day do not eat lunch. We take all the half day students out. They meet the parents at the gate at noon. And then lunch begins for the full day students right at noon. Um, so hopefully that answers that question. Are there not free tree, not free classrooms? The short answer is no. Uh, we are an allergy aware campus. And if you have any allergy concerns, I would encourage you to contact our school nurse and to contact uh, Jim Hoy, who's our uh, Dean of Faculty and Students. We are an allergy aware campus. We are not a, an allergy free campus. And so um, we do not guarantee um, any part of our campus to be allergen free. But uh, we do take uh, great precautions in ensuring the safety of all of our students. And uh, Nurse Sabrina or Jim Hoy will be able to have any, any conversation with any parent that has any concern about uh, an allergy or a safety-related uh, issue with your child. Can girls wear nail polish or small jewelry? Um, I actually have a slide on this in a couple of slides. Nail polish must be clear. And, um, you know, I think as long as it's a kind of a small, modest piece of jewelry, you know, that would be fine. I don't I don't think our policy says something specific about jewelry. The intent of that policy is uh, that our students are not being distracted by each other. It's one reason why we wear a uniform. It helps it helps equalize the social pressures of being a child, and it also helps create a distraction-free environment. So generally speaking, if, if it's creating a distraction, I think the teacher would reach out to you. Do the pre-K-4 kids get to be involved in clubs or sports? Yes, we do have clubs uh, that are available for pre-K-4 students. Our sports are really geared more towards the older kids. And, uh, and I'll talk a little bit more about that in a little bit. But we do have clubs and we do have sport-like activities that are available to the younger kids. How do we know which days we'll wear formal and informal uniforms? I, I, uh, it's in our calendar, and I'm going to show that in just a couple of slides. I didn't see a gym class. Um, Pre-K-4 does take PE, and if you've got any questions about your child's schedule, uh, please come to meet the teacher tomorrow, and your teacher will explain the schedule. But Pre-K does get all the same specials, PE, music, art, technology, library, all the same specials as every other grade. Will there be a security guard this year? Uh, 
yes, we we will continue to have we will continue to have uh, armed security on campus every day from 7 a.m. to 5:30. That will continue to be the case. Um, and we will continue to, this question is relating to dismissal time and directing cars. We will we we are not able to post a person out on the driveway. I think this question is referring to some cars trying to make that left hand turn in the morning or the afternoon. Unfortunately, we don't have any staff to put out there and try to enforce that. Um, but I will, from time to time, ask folks, please make sure you are only making a right turn out of our driveway. Please do not back up our car line or try to dart across the road and make a left-hand turn. Um, I make a le I, I need to go left out of the driveway. And I tell you, if you go right, it takes two seconds to go a block down the road. You make a U-turn. It's super safe. It's very fast. Please make a right-hand turn. Please do not try to go left. Will we have the opportunity to meet specials teachers tomorrow? Yes, please do. Please, absolutely. It's kind of an open house format. So honestly, go into any building, go, go meet any teacher, go to our library, go to our gym, uh, go to the art classroom. We've got signs out. We have yard signs up and down the, um, the courtyard. So if you're new on our campus, go to our Spanish classrooms, go to the library, go to the music room. Uh, absolutely, you are welcome to meet all of our teachers. You're welcome to say hi to folks. Uh, and it is exciting for your child to see their teacher, their desk, their cubby. That's part of the fun for tomorrow. Yes, so this question is, will there be a study hall this year in aftercare, a quiet room for homework? Yes, <clears throat> I don't have that listed as a club because it's not something that you have to sign up for. It's just part of aftercare. Uh, but Leslie Green, who's a, just a terrific teacher, has been here for many years. She volunteered to be the uh, quiet room uh, supervisor this year. And so Monday to Thursday in Leslie Green's fourth grade classroom, any student in aftercare can go to her room for a supervised quiet ho uh, homework room. Thank you for asking that question. This question is a very specific question about resource and student support. So if you have any questions about student support, please contact Tammy Mazinski. She would be happy to have a conversation with you about student support and, uh, and make sure that all of your questions have been answered. Do kindergartners have nap time? I, I don't think so. I'm... I'm 99% sure that kindergarten does not have nap time, but I might be wrong. Um, and uh, I'm sure you will find out tomorrow when you meet our two kindergarten teachers. All right, 24 questions answered. Okay, I think I've only got a, a few more slides. I'm gonna keep going here. I appreciate everybody's patience. Dress code for the girls. I kind of touched on this, but um, makeup, nail polish, artificial nails, tattoos, hair, um, you know, please, you know, uh, the intent of this policy is nothing faddish, nothing that, that would draw a lot of attention to a young lady. Um, uh, we're really trying to keep things modest, uh, as a Catholic school, but also distraction free. That's the intent of the dress code policy. Same for boys. Um, I know uh, I know it's currently in style for the boys to go with the big hair. I love it. I do. But we're going to ask the boys to be clean, well-groomed, well-trimmed. Hair must be cut uh, above the collar. It can't cover the eyes. It can't cover the ears. I, I love mohawks and mullets as much as anybody, but no mohawks, no mullets, uh, no, no messaging in the hair, no ponytails. Do it during the summer, but you got to get a haircut uh, for the first day of school. Of course, no tattoos. And for the boys, no, we do not allow any ear piercing or body piercing uh, for boys. Got a couple more questions here. Do middle schoolers have a study hall? Um, no. Uh, the answer to that is no. Um, kinder kindergarten... Oh, this is a teacher chiming in. Thank you. Uh, kindergarten does not have nap time, but we do have snack time for breaks. So thank you, 
uh, Ms. Schultz for chiming in. All right. <clears throat> We've done a lot of work this summer uh, updating our website in an effort to have our website have good information and improve our communication. And so towards that end, we're gonna we're gonna modify a little bit uh, the way we try to push information out and the way we try to communicate. So we're going to introduce this year a school-wide weekly folder. So this is a folder uh, that is being uh, done by the school and by the administration team. The admin team will get school-wide flyers and stuff it in a weekly folder for you and for your child. And then we will distribute those folders to teachers. And then teachers will put those folders in your child's backpack. Um, and I think our plan is to do that on Fridays. So the weekly folder will have um, flyers and other information, and a teacher might put something in that folder as well. We also are uh, uh, adding a lot of good information to our website. And, um, and so we're going to simplify. We used to send out a weekly electronic newsletter, and we're actually going to make that a monthly newsletter because the information that the newsletter used to contain, which was the weekly schedule, well, that's now on our website. Uh, flyers and sign up information, well, that's going to be going home in a weekly folder. And then typically also some photos. And we are also putting photos on our social media. So between the website, the weekly folder, and social media, those things accomplish really everything that the newsletter was accomplishing. And practically speaking, People weren't reading um, the the weekly uh, newsletter. It, was, it, it got really long, really cumbersome, just uh, almost too much information being crammed into one email. And so we're trying to simplify that this year, but also push out the same information. A couple of questions. Can you expand on the study hall question for middle school? Um, there, there is no study hall for middle school. Um, if it is possible that a child could uh, receive um, support. And, and if you have a specific question about uh, your child's success in our academic program uh, and their ability to keep up in our academic program, I would encourage you to reach out to Tammy Mazinski. Uh, but there's no structured study hall as part of the school day uh, for, for middle school. Is the folder per child or per family? So, so it's per child. Every child will have a, a weekly folder that will come home. Can middle schoolers bring cell phones? Thank you. Um, we, we have a, a strict no cell phone policy and I, I should make a slide on this. It's in our student parent handbook and I appreciate that question. Uh, we, we have a very strict no cell phone, no electronic device policy here at RPA. Uh, middle schoolers uh, or any student have plenty of opportunity to be on their phones outside of school. But here at Royal Palm Academy, part of our mission is forming these children to have good relationships with each other. And, and we believe and, and the data shows that those relationships are best expressed in an authentic face-to-face -face way. Uh, so we have a very strict uh, no cell phones during the school day policy. So, you know, if a child brings it on, on campus, it will need to be in their locker all day. Uh, if we see a child on their cell phone, we will confiscate it. Apple Watch is the same policy. So uh, Apple Watch would be considered the same as any other electronic device. Uh, so please no Apple Watches. Uh, if we see an Apple Watch, then we will either confiscate it or ask the child to put it back in their locker. Somebody told me that they will miss, they will miss the uh, weekly newsletter. I, I appreciate that. <clears throat> All right, moving on. All right, so we've got a lot of good information on our website, and uh, this is a screenshot of the clinic section of our website, which has been updated, updated as of last night. And so if you go to our website and if you go to Student Life, clinic is one of the options under Student Life, and you'll see 
Uh, three kind of options for more information, clinic hours, school illness policy, and then allergy and anaphylaxis emergency plan. And there's some information there. So uh, I know somebody asked a question about um, uh, allergies. And so there's, inf there's some information here under the clinic part of our website. But also, if you have any concerns about student allergies, please do contact uh, Nurse Sabrina or uh, Jim Hoy. Uh, our illness policy, this is just cut and paste from our website, but we do require that a child be fever free for at least 24 hours. Please do not give them uh, fever reducing medication. They will tell us um, there's no secrets. And so if you give your child Tylenol, um, they will come into the classroom and the very first thing they'll say to the teacher, what it will be, I was sick this morning, but, but they gave me medicine and sent me to school. So they'll tell us as soon as they come to school. Uh, so please don't do that. No vomiting, no diarrhea, and no respiratory symptoms for at least 24 hours. This is just how we help keep everybody well and everybody safe. All right. The school calendar. Uh, so this is a screenshot of our homepage. And if you look at the very top in that blue bar, you see RPA portal calendar alumni and schedule a visit. So if you click on calendar, that will take you to our school calendar, which uh, we are striving for the calendar to have all of the information that you need uh, for each day. And so if you look, this is the month of August. And so for the first day of school, you see that it says a schedule, uh, which doesn't, you know, you don't need to know exactly what that means, but it tells us internally what kind of schedule we're following for that day. It's daily uniform and it's the first day of school. And if, so for the second day, you see that we've got an assembly schedule. That's our B schedule. It's daily uniform. And uh, we've got the Naples players coming in to do some icebreaker activities with classes. Uh, if you look on Thursday, you see that it's a formal uniform day for school mass. You see that there is a staff meeting from 245 to 345. So that's a, an early dismissal day on Thursday. So I would ask that you take a look. And if you feel like there's information that's not on the calendar, please let me know. Because we want the calendar to be the one-stop shop for all of the information you need about events. You'll see the PVO kickoff meetings on the calendar for Friday. Uh, you'll see the uniforms, the schedules, any special events that are going on. You'll notice curriculum night is uh, Tuesday the 27th and Wednesday the 28th. Now I've only done this for August. The other months, September, October, November, they've got the big events, but they don't have all of the daily events yet. Um, and so I just wanted to get some feedback from you on on how does August look, and uh, once I get some feedback, then we'll we'll add things to September and October and that sort of thing. We also have really tried to grow the kinds of clubs that we're offering after school, and I'm really excited at the number of clubs we have to offer this year. So if you go to Student Life on the website. You'll see the menu pull down and then there'll be extracurricular activities at the top. And so we've got an extracurricular uh, page, which I've screenshotted here on the left. And you can see all those different clubs that we're offering. And then on the right is a, a, a schedule that shows you all of the practices and all of the clubs. And this is available right on the website. And so now I'm going to I'm going to do something scary. I'm going to exit out of my presentation. I'm going to go live to the internet and show you. So this is hopefully you can see this. This is a live shot of our website. And so calendar is right here at the top. If you click on calendar, it takes you to the school calendar and you can see exactly what I was describing for August. September has the major school events. October for the whole school year, it's got the big events. But for the month of August, we put all of the day-to-day -day stuff, the uniforms, the schedule, that sort of thing. If you go to Student Life and click on Extracurricular Activities, 
here's all of the clubs. So if you click right here, you can see that combined schedule. And then let's say that you're interested in the arts and crafts and scrapbooking club. If you click on that, you'll see who the club moderator is. You'll see when the club meets, what grades it's for, and then you can click here to register either for the full year or for a semester. There is a charge for clubs, and that's true all the way down the line. So I would encourage you to hop online, take a look at the different offerings for our clubs this year. All right, I'm going to hop back over. So that's clubs. I do have a question. <clears throat> Yes, parents may attend our school mass. And so when we have mass, parents are welcome to come and attend mass. And I would just encourage you to park your car, walk your child on campus, drop them off to go to the classroom, and then come on down to the gym. Parents are always welcome to uh, attend mass with us. <clears throat> yes, all clubs are 345 to 430. So 45 minutes for a club, 345 to 430. We also have three fall sports, and th uh, this is on the, uh, if you go to the athletics tab, uh, here's the fall sports page. And so we've got boys flag football. That's new this year. Um, we belong to the Sunshine Athletic Conference, and the Sunshine Athletic Conference wanted to try flag football this year. This year, it's only for seventh and eighth graders. That's not an RPA rule. That's the Sunshine Athletic Conference made the decision to only do flag football for seventh and eighth graders. It's possible in the future the conference might change that. I know that there's many boys, you know, in fifth grade and sixth grade that like flag football as well. Uh, but for the RPA team, it's only going to be for seventh and eighth grade. We also have girls volleyball. We've got boys and girls cross country. And then we have the registration links live on this page. We've got the schedule for games live on this page. And then you can also find that combined fall sport practice and club schedule. If you're trying to figure out, okay, can my child do this sport and this club? Hopefully that, that helps you figure that out. I've got some questions queuing up here. Uh, somebody just telling me, thank you. Uh, thank you very much. I appreciate that. Will club signups be in the same format as last year when they become available? So all clubs are available right now. And there is a there is a limit to how many kids can sign up for each club. So I would encourage you, thank you for attending this presentation, but I would encourage you to hop online right now, take a look at those clubs, and, uh, and I would sign up right now if you're interested. Uh, you can either sign up for the semester or you can sign up for the full year. And once the club reaches its maximum, we'll turn that sign up off. And then in the spring, if there were some folks who had signed up only for the fall, then we'll make those spots available for a semester for the fall for the spring as well. Somebody else said that they'll miss the weekly newsletter. Thank you. Any plans for musical instrument lessons? Um, we, we, the school, uh, do not have planned any musical instrument instruction other than instruments being introduced in our once a week music class. So all students take music once a week. And uh, we've got a, a terrific, very energetic uh, new music teacher who's been hard at work for the past couple of months uh, getting that music room ready to go. And I know that she's very uh, excited for that. Um, but she might introduce musical instruments, but I, I wouldn't call that musical instrument instruction. I do want to make a plug for uh, Edward Person, who is the uh, music director at St. John uh, the Evangelist Parish, and he offers piano lessons. We have a very great relationship with all of our Catholic parishes, but we have a, a particular relationship with St. John Evangelist. Uh, because the priests at St. John Evangelist provide us with support for Mass. Um, Edward is terrific. He came and provided us with some musical support for Mass last year. I think we have his flyer on our website, but his flyer for piano lessons is certainly something that we will send home in our 
weekly folder. And um, I would definitely give a plug for him if you're looking for piano lessons. Uh, is tinsel in girls' hair okay? I was waiting. I was waiting for somebody to finally ask me this question. I noticed this happening last year, and uh, I noticed that there was a, a little bit of a trend with with the girls occasionally having a little bit of tinsel in their hair. So, <clears throat> I um I, I think that if if it is something that is very discreet not something that is drawing a lot of attention to itself. And there's a bit of a judgment call here. Um, you know, I think that, you know, we want to allow uh, young people to, to um, you know, have a little fun from time to time. And so I think, I think if we really feel like that we're getting to a place with any particular child or with any particular fad, um, we'll communicate with the school. Hey, we need we need to tone this down a little bit. So so parents, I look, I've got two girls myself, right? I know girls like to feel pretty. I get it. I do. We want them to also be modest, right? We're a Catholic school. Um, so no press on nails, absolutely no press on nails, no makeup. Um, other than maybe a little, I, I don't know all the terminology, I'm the dad, but, you know, foundation, concealer, you know, modest, that's okay. The middle school team will make a judgment call. If it's a little strand of something in the hair, that's fine. If it's big or bright or really draws attention to itself, then we might we might reach out to you and say, hey, this is where we're crossing that boundary of drawing excessive attention to something. Thank you for the question. I was waiting for somebody to finally ask that. If you volunteered to be a room mom, how do you know if you were selected? Um, I That's a good question. I don't know. I think that that communication will happen tomorrow. Um, I think that we were waiting for the class list to be released. And so I will check with Sherry Waller, but I, I bet Sherry or somebody in the PVO has a plan for how that will be communicated. And I bet that will happen tomorrow. But Sherry will know. I bet Sherry's on this call and I bet she will text me or email me the answer soon. <clears throat> Oh, this is a comment, just a comment. My son has been having lessons with Mr. Person since last year, has made amazing progress, great teacher, super reasonable, accommodating. Yeah, I, I haven't had uh, piano lessons, but I appreciate the validation. Um, we love our relationship with St. John Evangelist. Uh, Mr. Person is terrific. Um, I would certainly recommend him as well. Thank you for that validation. What time do clubs end? Clubs end at 4.30. So all clubs are 3.45 to 4.30 every single day, even on Thursdays when we have an early dismissal. All right, moving on. I want to say thank you to Trish Schwartz, who um, in the last, I think, four or five days, she personally got an RPA spirit store online. Uh, we have struggled with this a couple the past couple of years. You know, we love showing our school spirit. We tried having an in-person spirit store. There's just a point where we're not a retailer. And so maintaining inventory, ordering things, and trying to be an outstanding Catholic school was, was a real challenge for us. And, uh, and I want to say thank you to Trish, who, who really took this, the initiative on this. And I want to make a plug for that spirit store. So again, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to switch over to the internet, which is always uh, kind of risky. And if you go to Student Life, and if you go down here to Spirit Store, and if you click on this, it'll take you right to our Spirit Store. And there's lots of options. So we've got some shirt options. We've got a hat. We've got some short options. We've got a couple of polo options for men and women. We've got a backpack option, uh, a tote option, some outerwear, some rain gear, which I really could have used uh, earlier this week. And some T-shirt options, just uh, and I, even a look at that, even a towel option. So uh, please go to our spirit store. It's got all kinds of fun RPA branded stuff. And uh, thank you, Trish, for pulling that together. I think this is the last slide. Um, 
So meet the teachers tomorrow and uh, nine to 10 for last names A through M, 11 to 12 for last names N through Z. Now it's not a it's not a structured program. It's not an hour long. That's just a window of time. If you come at 9:15, if you come at 9:30, if you come at 9:45, that's perfectly fine. It really is just a chance for your child and for you to meet your teacher, see the classroom, show your child where their cubby is, where their desk is, uh, pick up some information from your teacher, pick up some information from the front office. You could be in and out as quickly as 10 or 15 minutes, but of course, it's fun to see other people on campus, to see old friends, to say hi. Uh, you're certainly welcome to walk around campus and, and pop into other classrooms as well. I will point out that it is deliberate that there's an hour between 10 and 11 a.m. That's just to give our teachers a chance to catch their breath, you know, give them a chance to get a drink of water, use the bathroom, catch their breath before the next wave comes through starting at 11. So I, I, my only request is please don't come between 10 and 11. That's our chance for our teachers to catch their breath. Come between 9 and 10 or come between 11 and 12 if possible, please. And then the first day of school is on Monday. It's going to be exciting. And I think... I th all right. I'm here all night long, so I will I will stay and answer questions until every single question is answered. Here we go. If there's a club or an activity on Thursday, do the children have the option to stay on campus during that time? Great question. Thank you. If you sign up for a Thursday club, there will be no charge for the time between 2.15 and when the club begins. Um, and hopefully my business office didn't just have a heart attack when I said that. So because it's an early dismissal day, because the club isn't going to start until uh, 3.45, um, there's no charge for that time that your child's on campus waiting. So yes, on Thursday, your child can absolutely wait on campus They'll go to aftercare, then they'll go to their club, and then they can be picked up at 4.30, and you would not be charged for aftercare for that small amount of time in between 2.15 and when the club begins. Thank you for that question. I'll also say we do the same thing on half days. There's only a couple of half days during the year. <clears throat> only a couple. Um uh, a couple of days when we do like a 1215 dismissal. When we do, out of respect for our working families, we do not charge you for five hours of aftercare. We cap it at two hours for aftercare on those days when we do an early dismissal um, out of consideration for our working families who really aren't able to get here until 530. What local parish is best to receive sacraments for grade two? Good question. Um, and it's a complicated question because um, actually each parish does it a little differently. And so I'm not sure if I could say that there's a best parish. I will say that um, of all of the parishes where RPA students go, typically uh, our students are going to St. John Evangelist or St. Agnes, those are the two biggest that draw from our school. Uh, St. William and St. Leo of Light also have a good chunk of students uh, here at RPA. There's also a local fraternity of St. Peter Parish called Corpus Christi, and some of our families go there as well. That's a parish that um, follows the Latin rite for the different sacraments. And each of them do it a little differently. I am most familiar with St. John Evangelist. That's where my family goes. And, um, and so what I would encourage you to do is uh, send me an email if you have any questions about sacramental prep, and I'll make sure your email gets to the right person who can give you the best information. I will say Sherry Waller uh, has, I think, the central hub of all of that information. Her job as director of advancement is really that community partnership and community outreach. This kind of falls within that sphere. So you can email me or email Sherry. 
Oh, great question. Is there a school supply list? So welcome to Royal Palm Academy. We do not, uh, we provide all the school supplies. Your child does not need to buy any school supplies. So gone are the days of the school supply list. That's included in your tuition. When you come tomorrow, you'll see all the school supplies ready to go for your child. <clears throat> How do we sign up for aftercare? There's, there's no sign up necessary for aftercare. You can use it on a drop-in basis. If you are going to use it frequently or regularly on, on specific days, I would ask that you please email Dorothy Flint. She's our aftercare coordinator, but that's not necessary. If there's a day when you were trying to get to school on time, but there's traffic or there's an accident on 75 and you show up an hour late and your child was in aftercare, that's no problem. You can, you can use it as a drop-in service as well. Is there track and field this year for elementary? I So track and field is in the spring. And off the top of my head, I, I don't remember exactly which grades are eligible for that. Javier Busto is our athletic director. Javier, uh, Coach Javi, uh, was here last year as a PE teacher. He's, he's a PE teacher again this year, and he's also the athletic director. I would encourage you to email Coach Javi, and he might know the answer to that question, you know, what grades are eligible for track and field, but that's a spring sport. Do we know when TGA sports begin? I, I don't off the top of my head. I think that they're going to start the same as when we start, which is Monday the 19th, and um, TGA was going to be there tonight. Um I would recommend emailing Coach Javi or Jen Clark. I think one of the two of them would know the answer to TGA Sports, how to register, when they're being offered, uh, which sports, which, which days, that sort of thing. What do the kids do during before and after care? It's essentially unstructured playtime. Um, if you are looking for something structured, I would recommend you sign your child up for one of our clubs. Aftercare is essentially just unstructured playtime, the same as before care. In the aftercare, in the afternoon, there is, as part of aftercare, that supervised study hall room that's from 345 to 430. There's no additional charge for that. It's just part of the aftercare program. But if you're looking for something structured, I would sign up for a club. So for flag football, it says practice on Thursday is not until four. Will that change to start earlier? No, because our coaches are staff and they need to participate in the Thursday staff and faculty meeting. So the school day ends at 2.15. Carline goes from 2.15 to 2.45. Our faculty meeting begins at 2.45 to 3.45. And then practices can start at 4 on Thursdays or clubs can start at 3.45. Uh, that's why that's the case. Thank you, Karen, for your kind note. I appreciate that. How much is the cost for the aftercare? You know, I should know that um, it's an hourly rate. I think it's on our website. And if um, I will get that information out, I think it's $12 an hour. I might be off by a dollar an hour, but it's in that ballpark. It's right around $12 an hour. And that's billed monthly as incidental billing. Did we maintain five days of Spanish instruction per week? Yes, all students still receive five days a week of Spanish instruction, and you will receive your child's academic schedule tomorrow when you come for Meet the Teacher. Do we have to take a sleeping bag for pre-K-3? No, uh, we have a mat. I do think that teachers are gonna ask you to send in a blanket. Um, and and so when you come for meet the teacher tomorrow, they will they will share with you everything that you need to know for pre-K, but you will not send in a sleeping bag, but I do think you send in a blanket. 
Is pickup patrol being used this year? Um, it's a good question. There were a couple of new systems that we were trying to deploy over the summer, and they're taking a little longer to deploy than I was expecting. And um, so, so I, I'm trying to replace pickup patrol with something new, but it's not ready yet. So I need to check with Pat Bolzer, but I do think that Pickup Patrol is set up, and I think that we will start the school year using Pickup Patrol. My hope is, is that within a couple of weeks, we'll be ready to transition to a new system called School Pass, and uh, and I'll I'll provide more information about that when we are ready to make that transition. Um, but I'll I'll find out and I'll make sure that we communicate that. How do we figure out which days to wear our gym clothes? Um, so uh, if you're not, this this question specifically says, I can't come to meet the teacher tomorrow. So I would suggest that you email your teacher. You should know who, you, who your teacher is. Email them and just ask which days of the week are our gym, and you'd be able to get an answer to that question. If for any reason you, you are not able to get into facts, you can always email Tammy Mazinski. Uh, and she'll be able to give you that information as well. But please do try to come to meet the teacher if at all possible. <clears throat> all right, this question's asking about making an exception for one of the clubs. Um, if you have any questions about the ages for a club, I would encourage you to contact the club moderator or contact Jen Clark. The ages for clubs are selected because, you know, at the end of the day, an eighth grader doesn't want to be in a club with a kindergarten student. So we tried to create a variety of clubs and then have ages for each of those clubs that make sense. So the no bake club is really geared towards the younger kids. And so that's a pre-K, kindergarten, first grade kind of a club. Uh, or there might be another club that's really geared towards the older kids. Um, so I get it that sometimes, you know, you might have a child that that's not quite the same age as the club, but you really want to be in that club. And um, and so I, my response would be reach out to the club moderator uh, or reach out to Jen Clark. But just keep in mind that those ages were created so that uh, we get a healthy number of kids who are signing up for that club uh, that are all within a couple of years of each other. Uh, this is a question asking about cross country and aftercare. Uh, it's a good question. Um, you know, basically, do I have to pay for aftercare for the time from 3.30 to 4 for athletic practices? And I'm pretty sure the answer to that question is no. I, I, I don't think we charge for aftercare if the child is waiting um, to go from class to the uh, directly to sports practice. I'm 100% I'm sure the answer to that is no. So I'm just going to say no. They're not going to be charged for that. How many car passes does each family receive? We will need three. If you need an additional car pass, uh, please come tomorrow, go to the front office, and uh, Pat Bolzer will be able to provide you with assistance. Oh, thank you. As a compliment for the new school bus, will the new school bus be used for field trips? Yes, it is our plan to use the school bus and uh, use it for field trips, uh, sports, activities, and uh, it's new, and so uh, we'll use it as as often and as we are comfortable in doing so, and try to ease the burden on asking parents to be drivers for those events. Oh, Pat Bolzer chimed in. Thank you, Pat. Uh, Pat Bolzer says pickup patrol will be ready on Monday. Watch for invitation email to register. If you do not get this invitation by Monday, they can email. Pat Bolzer. Thank you, Pat Bolzer. <clears throat> if a family member is picking up our child in their car, how does that work if they don't have a pass? So if you're going to have somebody pick up your child um, 
other than you, please, please call us. I think Pickup Patrol can handle that. But I know that the new system that I want to transition us to allows for that. It's one reason why I want to move to this new system. There's a lot of uh, really easy to use features in it. <clears throat> it's called School Pass. Um, but I think that might be possible in Pickup Patrol. But in a pinch, just call us, call the front office, let Pat Bolzer know, and then we'll be on the lookout for, for somebody different. All right. I have answered 62 questions. There's no questions remaining. So this is your, your last call for, uh, for any questions. What is the pickup system for picking up multiple kids from different families? Um, good question. I would suggest if you are, this is specifically for a play date or a sleepover. So um, I think it depends. If they're all coming from the same class, you might notify the teacher. Uh, you can always call the main office and let Pat Bolzer know, and she'll make sure that the team knows. And that specific need is also addressed in the new system that I want to deploy. And so hopefully within a couple of weeks, we can deploy that new system. It'll make it very easy for parents to designate other parents to pick up their child. Uh, so we'll get there soon. All right. Will soccer shots, golf, et cetera, third-party sports options be available again? Yeah, uh, so those are provided by soccer shots and TGA Sports. I don't have that information with me. They were going to come tonight. I would encourage you to contact Jen Clark or contact uh, Coach Javier, and uh, they'll get you that information for soccer shots, um, TGA Sports, all that kind of stuff. All right, folks, I'm going to give it just uh, 30 seconds here to see if any last minute questions pop in. If you were wondering how many folks were online, I think at the highest I saw 130 people online and there are still 75 of you who are, gosh, it's almost eight o'clock at night and uh, everybody's just that excited for the new school year. It's fantastic. Nobody's going to ask me any Mike Busman trivia or anything. Uh, these, these questions are so, so clean and appropriate. I, uh, I'm impressed. All right, folks, it looks like that somebody's just poking fun at me here. How many students are enrolled this year? I think we're right at 300, right, right around 300. So good, good, healthy enrollment this year. Thank you for the presentation. I appreciate it. Okay, guys, I think that's all of the questions for tonight. Thanks so much for everybody attending. Can't wait to see you on campus tomorrow for Meet the Teacher. We are super excited for the first day of school on Monday. Uh, God bless you. I hope you have a good night.